our soil. And um, these fundamental rights to include um, the right to due process if the government uh, seeks to deport yeah. them, the right to pay for work that they've performed, um, the right to attend uh, K through 12 public education, and the right to protection from unlawful searches and seizures. So um, there are reasons why courts have consistently concluded that these constitutionally protected rights are not just reserved for citizens. And I want to talk about some of those reasons. So one is the desire to avoid creating a caste-like society, where foreigners are the ones that work in jobs and suffer intimidation and exploitation without any legal recourse. Uh, are treated like this even with the possibility of Imagine how pervasive this type of exploitation would be if there wasn't any um, well-established legal rights for workers regardless of immigration status. So the need to avoid these concerns about exploitation is one reason the law has consistently protected all workers regardless of immigration status. Another reason to protect immigrants' rights is the reality that there's not a bright line between immigrants and citizens. So immigrants become citizens through naturalization. Immigrants have children who are citizens. They marry citizens. They certainly have neighbors who are citizens. Um, just to give you one statistic, uh, there are five million children in the country today with at least one undocumented parent. And of those five million children, four million are U.S. citizens themselves. So we live in a country where immigrants and citizens are basis for their deportation and that they can seek a variety of forms of discretionary relief that a judge can decide whether or not to grant that would in effect cancel the deportation. Um, so one key message that we're trying to get out to the community right now, to the immigrant community right now, is that even if there will be significantly ramped up immigration enforcement, um, they should not be intimidated into signing a rapid deportation. That um, they need to get informed and learn their rights and ensure that they receive the process that they're due. So um, that as a community, there's a lot of people working on getting a lot more Know Your Rights presentations out to the immigrant community now, offering people individual consultations. Um, and I'd be happy to talk to anyone who's interested about that, about how, um, uh, how we're trying to do that. Um, so these are some of the basic legal rights that immigrants have. Um, now I want to turn back to the point about complexity that I raised at the beginning. So it's easy to lapse into oversimplified terms when talking about immigration, dividing the world up between citizens and undocumented people, when in fact there are all kinds of complex rules and status. young people in this country who were brought here as children um, should be brought out of the shadows, should be set on a path towards citizenship. I am 100% behind undocumented students and the, the fight for DACA and for the future of recipients that received uh, uh, DACA recipients. Um, but I find it really troubling the common tactic to kind of divide up uh, the world between children and parents and to really vilify the parents that brought their children here. Um, and so I'd like to challenge us to think beyond that kind of binary. And uh, I'm going to do that by talking about some of the stories of clients that we've served in our clinic that counter the caricatures of undeserving immigrants that so dominate the press. And there's two particular labels that I think are troubling. Um, one is of the criminal alien, and um, the other is of border crossers. Um, so to begin with the criminal alien, that's a term that's used to refer to any immigrant with any criminal history whatsoever. And we've already been told that this is going to be